What's up everybody, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at the new world building features for Unreal Engine 5. We're going to take a look at how to build large worlds with word partition. And we are also going to take a look at the tiny but very important features like uh, one file per actor and hierarchical LODs. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So here we are in a brand new um, third person blueprint project that we created in the first tutorial. Uh, the first thing we're going to see is how to activate uh, word partition. So to do that, we need to go into our project settings and under engine word partition, we have here enable word partition. So this has to be checked and under it, when we check it, we have the enable conversion prompt. So for those who have a, a project with the Unreal Engine 4 uh, that used word composition and want to migrate that word, that map to word partition, you can either do it with a commandlet that we are going to see in the documentation a little bit uh, after, or we, you can enable this enable conversion prompt, which is going to run the commandlet for you when you will want to open a, um, a world that is not uh, made with word partition. So for our use case, we're not gonna uh, use this, but if you have an older project, you might wanna check this and open the maps to convert them to word partition. So just by checking this, word partition is activated in our world. So now we'll just create a new level. We'll create an empty level. We light it like we have seen in our Lumen tutorial. If you haven't seen then I will link it so that you can learn how to light worlds from scratch. And we're good. So our word is lit. And you can see here our new word has a word partition that is enabled by default. So word partition is a system that uh, partitions your large word automatically and also handles uh, streaming automatically. So if we come here and we will add some shapes. So let's just add a plane. Let's make this 100 by 100. All right. And let's just duplicate this. And let's put some actors in here. So let's just go into our starter content take the props and let's put some unreal chairs in here. So let's put a lot of them. So here I'm just holding alt and moving the object to duplicate it. This is a shortcut that you can use when level designing. We have a not very large, but a kind of a big world with some assets. So we can just come here into world partition. Let's save this. Uh, in order to see your world in here, if you don't see it, it means that your map is not yet saved. So we're just going to save our map and we're going to see it. So let's call this test word partition. And here you can see that I can now see the tiles. So if I select everything and unload the tiles, I unload everything. There is nothing in my world. And if I can, if I select just one and load it, I can load this. Now I can load this and this. And this so you can see that the world is partitioned automatically and if i go into my world settings and under world partition i can just open this all of it and here we can see the setting for our grid so we have a setting for the grid name and then we have the setting for the cell size and the loading range if we check this preview grid you can see that we can see the streaming grid in here and we can change the values of this to really handle the uh, streaming the way we want it so let's just make this a little bit small and make this a little bit bigger let's just do something a little bit more funny so let's just take the chairs and let's make them 10 by 10 by 10 so that these are really easy to see so now if I start moving, we can see that the chairs and the planes are appearing in the distance. And if I start going back, we can see that the streaming is handled automatically. Great. So basically, this is word partition. Now, uh, what we are going to see are some um, debug commands to help you uh, when working. So if I hit the tilde key, to focus uh, the command line and I can use 
wp dot runtime and i have here runtime toggle draw runtime hash 2d and 3d these are two important commands so i will toggle the 2d let's just try the 2d to see what it does so now if i play i can see the cells that are loaded and unloaded dynamically so if i do this if i start coming back we can see that the cells the moment the circle uh, overlaps a cell it is loaded and the moment it's not overlapping anymore the cell is unloaded so this is the first uh, command line that is really important and now the second one is three D, and what three D does is it actually shows you in three D your uh, the circle of the streaming, and it shows you the cells whether they are loaded or not. So to visualize this a little better, let's just go up. Let's drop a plane in here. 10 by 10, all right, and let's drop a player start. So we'll grab a player start and we put it in here. So now if I hit play, I am on this plane and we can see down the things that are loaded. So I will just write in fly to make my character fly and now I can start moving and you can see that there are cells that are black and unloaded and when I will start going, they will just load and you can see the streaming working so of course this is not uh this world i i, I just made is not really like made correctly so that everything loads at the same time but you can basically see what it what it does so here you can see some red squares because they have been unloaded and if i start going towards them again they are loaded and they will turn green there so these are the two debug commands that are uh, important when you are working with word partition now we can see how um, these things are loaded or unloaded and how we can configure that so if i select a specific actor in here and i come down to world partition i can see that i have a grid placement so this can be bounds location or always loaded so grid placement means how do you uh, handle the object um, compared to the cell it is in so if location it means if the center of the object is in the cell it is loaded and otherwise it is unloaded if it is the bounds it means the bounds of the entire object are in the cell or not and if it is always loaded so these objects will always be loaded so here for example i can select the planes if i want these to be always loaded so i can just click always loaded and now if i hit play again you can see that all my planes are loaded but the chairs are not because they are based on uh, their location and the grid cell so if i do fly again and now i start flying i can see that the chairs are loading and unloading but not the planes so this is word partition basically this is all you need to know for word partition it is the beauty of the system is that it is handled automatically and you do not need to set up everything like the way we used to to, to do in unreal engine 4 so in ue4 we used to make our worlds in separate maps and handle the streaming ourselves either through blueprints when we open a door we load the the next level or with volumes streaming volumes we put a volume and we configure what levels that volume was going to load once we get into it Right now, we do not need to do anything like that. It is automatic, it is handled by the engine, and it is really simple to use. So let's now jump into the documentation and see uh, word partition and try to understand it a little bit better. So word partition is a new data management and distance-based level streaming system that provides a complete solution for large world management. The system removes the previous need to divide large levels into sub-levels by storing your world in a single persistent separated uh, level separated into grid cells and provides you with automatic streaming system to load and unload those cells based on distance from a streaming source 
So this streaming source is quite important. We will uh, see what it means after. So enabling word partition in your world, you can enable it in uh, your world settings for a single map, or you can enable it in your project settings for your entire project. So this is the commandlet to convert your existing worlds to use word partition. So you have a commandlet that you can run, which is in here. Uh, you can either run it yourself by navigating into the uh, UE4 uh, installation folder and running the command line on your world, or you can just check the um, checkbox in the project settings, uh, which is in here, to have UE5 ask you if you want to convert your existing world once you open it. And now here in using word partition, we have these cells are loaded and unloaded at runtime by the presence of streaming sources, such as the players. In this way, the engine only loads parts of the level that the player sees and interacts with at a given time. When editing the world, actors can be added anywhere and are automatically assigned to a grid cell based on their grid placement setting, found in the details word partition. So this is what I showed you, bounds, location, or always loaded. So always loaded is something you will use for the outskirts and for the very far away object that you have if you have mountains in your world um, and you want those to be always visible or if you have, for example, a tower in your world and you want that to guide the player so you can use always loaded for that and it will always be loaded and everything that is props and details in your map you can have the have those uh, uh, settings be bound or location to have them streamed in your world once the player gets close to them here we will see a little bit the one file per actor so since actors are saved in their own individual files using the one file per actor feature it is not required to check out the level file from source control to make changes to the actors in the world this frees up the level file for others of your team so when you are working on your level before uh, once you were working on your level we used to check out that level so other developers could not uh, change it or modify it until we have submitted our changes but in unreal engine 5 actually there is a setting that is one file per actor that can be activated or deactivated uh, depending on your needs. But if it is activated on a actor, that actor in the world is saved in its own file. So let's say, for example, we have a tree that is positioned at a specific position in our world. If that tree uses the one file per actor setting, when someone moves that tree, he does not need to submit the changes for the entire map. He can just submit the changes for that tree and that is stored in one single object with the position, the scale and all the parameters. So this is really, really good for collaborating on, on big worlds. And this is one only one feature for collaboration. We are going to see um, data, data layers, which also help with collaborating on large worlds. So for more information on one file per actor system and Unreal Engine's integrated source control, see the one file per actor documentation. We will check that after. Here we are going to talk about streaming sources. So these are an important thing in world partition because they are not just the player. So streaming sources are components that define a position in the world and trigger the loading of cells around them. A player acts as a streaming source. Streaming sources can be added to the world using a streaming source component. For example, a streaming source component can be activated at the location that the player will teleport to. So it can load the cells there once the grid cells are loaded, the player teleports to the location and the streaming source component is deactivated. Since there is no longer a streaming source at the player's previous location, those grid cells would be unloaded. So if you know that you are going to teleport the player into a location that is outside his streaming range, you can just spawn a streaming source component at that location so that the world and world partition knows that it needs to load those cells. And once Th those are loaded you can teleport the player and you can deactivate the streaming source component so it is not just based on the player you have complete flexibility you can spawn different streaming sources uh, at different locations to load those areas and you can dis deactivate them to uh, unload them so changing the runtime grid settings the second factor that determines whether a grid cell is loaded or unloaded at runtime is the setting of the runtime grid itself Runtime grid settings are located in the world setting panels in the world setting uh, word partition uh, setup section. So this is what we saw. We have our grid that is in here. We can determine the cell size. So those are the squares that will load or unload uh, depending on your position. We can set the loading range uh, and this will be how many squares we want to load 
or unload once we get close or far away from them. So we have complete um, control over our uh, streaming grid. So loading and unloading grid cells in the editor. So this is what we saw in the word partition tab. We can just select the cells that we want and we, we can right click and load selected cells or unload selected cells. So these are just in editor. They do not have anything to do with your game uh, once it is packaged. This is just to make um, working in the editor easier so that you can just unload all the cells that you do not want to see and you um, have the, the engine running at a better uh, frame rate with better performance and you can work just on the cells that are important to you without loading the entire world. And here we have generating hierarchical level of detail. We will see that uh, further down the documentation. And then we have testing a partitioned world and these are the commands that we saw and you have some other debug commands in here that you can check for yourself. So this is the documentation for world partition. We talked about one file per actor. Let's check the documentation for that. So in previous versions of Unreal Engine, when you wanted to make changes to one or more actors inside the level, you needed to check the file out of source control. This locked other team members out of that file until your work was complete, slowing down the development process since only one person could work on a file at a time. So this was really annoying because when you have multiple people working on the same world, Every time someone wanted to change something in the world, he had to check out that level file, do his changes, submit the changes, and then someone else could check out that file after that. This was really annoying. Now you have, if you enable one file per actor, you can just change the actors that you want and it does not affect the um, other members of your team. So enabling one file per actor. The one file per actor feature is designed to be granular and can be used uh, several different ways. The first way to enable one file per actor manually on indiv individual actors uh, via the details panel. So the second method is to enable one file per actor for use with your entire level. The important thing here is to understand how that works with source control. So while working in your source control application, you will notice that external actors um, file names are encoded. To address this issue, you can now view and validate the content of a change list before it is submitted using the view change list window. Content and actor files should now be submitted to source control from within the editor. And during early access, change list support is only available when using Perforce as your source control provider. So it doesn't work for Git, but just for early access. So what does this mean? If you are using um, your source control software and you want to submit uh, changes for your level, uh, which uses one file per actor, you are not going to see that actor, what it is in your source control. So for example, if you move a point light, you will just see an encoded uh, string that it, that is the ID of, uh, of that item. And you might not understand what that item is or what that object is. But if you open the view change list window in UE5, you can see the, the items that have been modified and you can submit them from there to avoid confusion. So if we come here, tools and change list. So it will be in here. Uh, once you have a source control that is set for your project, uh, you will see the object that have been modified in here and you can submit them from here. And that's all for one file per actor. So the next thing that we are going to talk about are hierarchical level of detail. So the world partition system uses a grid to separate your world into cells that can be dynamically loaded or unloaded at runtime. Yet, there are times when you want actors that are distant and non-interactive, such as distant mountains, trees, and cliffs, to still be visible. Um, so this is when we, when we said, for example, when you put an actor and you set it to always loaded, well, sometimes you want level of detail on that actor that is always loaded. And this is how it works. The word partition hierarchical level of detail, HLOD, uses custom HLOD layers to organize large amounts of static meshes and generate a single proxy mesh and material. This technique is used to visualize unloaded word partition grid cells to reduce the number of draw calls per frame and to increase performance, especially when used with large open worlds. Some word components such as landscape and water components are currently not supported but by HLOD actors. So creating HLOD layers, uh, this is done directly from the content browser. So if we go back to our project in the content browser, you can just do add in here and miscellaneous and we have HLOD layer or you can just right click miscellaneous and HLOD layer. 
Double click the new HLOD layer to open it in the asset editor. And then you can set the different parameters that we have in here. You have the details for everything and what it means. So you have different types of HLOD layer. You have instancing, merged mesh and simplified mesh. So instancing means uh, static mesh assets in this type of layer are replaced with instance static mesh components using the lowest level of detail settings for, for those assets. This type is ideal for imposter meshes such as trees and foliage. Merged mesh uh, means that static mesh assets in this type of layer are merged to create a single proxy mesh. And simplified mesh is like merged mesh but simplified. So static mesh assets in this type of layer are merged into a single proxy mesh and mesh simplification is performed. So now once you, we have created our uh, HLOD layer and we have set our uh, parameters to what we want, how does that work? So to generate HLOD uh, proxy meshes, actors need to be added to an HLOD layer and told to generate HLODs. Once this is done, a commandlet is run to generate the proxy geometry. Right now, the commandlet is the only way to generate HLOD proxy geometry. So the first way to add uh, actors to HLOD layer is to do it through the uh, property in the actors detail panel. The second one, the default HLOD uh, layer property of a data layer. So if, we, if you have a data layer, you can select a default HLOD uh, layer in there. We will see that in the data layers tutorial. And the third one is the default HLOD layer property in your world setting. So once we have done this, we need to generate HLOD layers. So HLODs are generated using word partition HLOD builder commandlet. Running this commandlet creates the HLOD actors for your world partition cells according to the generation setting you have specified in your HLOD layer. So as we saw before, the commandlet is the only way to generate HLOD proxy geometry currently. It means that after that, we will not uh, probably not uh, need the commandlet anymore, but right now, you need to run this commandlet that is detailed in here. So same, you navigate to the UE uh, installation folder and you run the commandlet on your world and you can generate the HLODs. And once you have done that, you have uh, ways to visualize your HLODs at runtime as we have with Nanite and with Word Partition and all the world building features with Unreal Engine 5. So that's it guys for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. In the next uh, tutorial, we will be exploring data layers and level instancing. These are um, two things you can use to uh, better manage the object in your levels. You can use data layers to have different layers that have different uh, actors. And you can also use level instances to kind of spawn levels inside other levels. It's uh, quite similar to what we used to do in Unreal Engine 4 but it adds a little bit more flexibility and we will see that in the in the next tutorial so i hope you enjoyed this if you like this video please hit that like button it helps the channel a lot if you're not subscribed yet please consider subscribing if you're interested in game dev game design and unreal engine 5 there are still some tutorials coming on the way and as usual my name is Anis. thank you very much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one